The low health playstyle is the strongest playstyle in Forbidden West. While it might seem counterintuitive and risky to purposely damage yourself and play on the edge of death, it's actually much safer than you might think, and we can massively boost the damage of all our weapons by doing so. I'm going to break down for you exactly how to leverage the low health playstyle to maximize your damage output and stay alive even when it seems like you shouldn't be able to. You may have heard of this concept of a low health build, and you may even understand that it lets you deal massive damage. But I think most people hesitate to try it out because it's not clear how we take advantage of that damage buff while also not dying super easily. So let me show you the three key skills we need to utilize to make the low health build both powerful and safe. The main low health skill we're after is low health ranged, which at level four provides an 80% damage boost to impact damage when we're below 50% health. It does only boost impact damage, so low health ranged won't boost tear, elemental buildup, or other damage types. But impact damage is the primary damage type. It's what directly deals damage to an enemy's health, so an 80% boost is a big deal, especially when we're using high impact damage weapons like a sharp shot bow or a bolt blaster. So the primary goal of the low health build is to get Aloy below 50% health so we can activate low health ranged. We can do that either by intentionally damaging ourselves or we can wait for a machine to kindly do it for us. But of course, now our problem is we're more vulnerable with only half our normal amount of health. So to avoid being a glass cannon, another cornerstone of the low health build is low health defense, which at level four reduces all incoming damage by 70%. In other words, Aloy will only take 30% of the damage she would otherwise take. Understanding this is really important because I think this is where most people don't see the true potential of the low health playstyle. So imagine a machine is about to hit you for 500 damage. Normally, you'd of course take 500 damage. In the base game, max health is 700, so we'd be down to 200 health. However, with low health defense active, you'll only take 150 damage. That's the 70% reduction on 500. Now, of course, to have low health defense active, we have to keep our health below 30%, which would be 210. Taking 150 damage at 10 would bring us down to 60. There's two problems with this. First, even though low health defense reduced the incoming damage a lot, we're still not in a good situation at only 60 health. And second, there's no good way to heal back up to 30% without going past it and deactivating low health defense. We can't heal one berry at a time, so using berries like normal will quickly blow past the 30% level and also the 50% level, which will deactivate low health ranged. Health potions also heal us too much, so we can't use those. So we need a way to heal back up after we get hit, but not go past 30%. Staying at 30% is hard, but staying at 25% is actually very easy, which brings us to the third key skill, low health regen. Anytime we're below 25% health, which is called the critical health state, after a short delay, low health regen will automatically regenerate our health back up to that 25% level, but not past it, which is key. With low health regen at level two, which you can achieve by just unlocking the two passive skills in the survivor branch, the delay is four seconds long. And at level four, which you can get by adding a low health regen weave or using an outfit with the perk built in, it's only 1.5 seconds long. This means as long as you can avoid taking too much damage in a short period of time, Aloy is very hard to kill. She can take a big hit nerfed by low health defense, then just wait a few seconds for low health regen to heal her back up to 25%. Then take another big hit, wait, heal up, take another hit, and so on. The risk, of course, is if we take too much damage before low health regen has a chance to heal us. So we're not invincible, but as long as you're able to avoid enough attacks, it's actually pretty hard for Aloy to die. To avoid attacks effectively, of course, you need to spend some time learning their patterns and telltale signs. If you'd be interested in a video on that topic, let me know down below, and if I've already made it, I'll link it down there. But you'll also definitely want to know how to slide dodge, which is arguably the most effective way to dodge in the game. I do already have a video that explains exactly how to slide dodge, so I'll link that down below as well. Okay, so to effectively use the low health playstyle, we want to get down to 25% health and stay there to keep low health ranged active, which gives us a big damage boost, and low health defense active, which protects us by nerfing incoming damage. We'll stay there by relying on low health regen to heal us back to the 25% level for free. 25% of max health in the base game is 175. But low health defense and other skills that activate at the critical health level actually work at 176. And you'll notice that low health regen heals us back up to 176 instead of 175 as well. I guess Gorilla just wanted to give us one extra HP, or maybe it's a bug. Either way, 176 is the key health level for the low health playstyle. In the Burning Shores DLC, the new max health is 800, so the low health build works at 201. 
It's really important to remember you're actually safer at 176 HP than you are at say 300 or even 500. The biggest mistake you can make with the low health playstyle is healing above that 25% level and losing the protection of low health defense. To get down to the critical health level, we can either wait to take enough damage and remember not to heal, or we can damage ourselves on purpose. Advanced or regular explosive spikes will do the trick. Regular explosive bombs on a blastling are a little nicer because they don't stagger Aloy. You can also use certain weapon techniques like Power Shredder or Brace Shot to damage yourself, but remember, weapon techniques will use up stamina. Getting back to our three key low health skills though, we definitely want to get low health ranged and defense up to level 4. We can get two points for each by simply unlocking their corresponding passive skills in the survivor branch of the skill tree. The remaining two points will need to either come from skill perks on outfits or weaves. You can find the plus two low health ranged weave on the Nora Valiant outfit for sale in Lowlands Path. The Tanakh Marauder outfit found in Thornmarsh has the low health defense weave. Low health regen is less critical to get to level 4, and again you can get 2 points from passive skills, but if you want the weave it's on Sobex Raiment which comes from a main quest. Weaves can be removed from an outfit and used on others once you've upgraded it to level 3. However, the Tanakh Vanquisher is by far the best way to put together all the important low health boosts because it has most of them built in. In addition to low health ranged and defense, it also has low health valor and low health melee, as well as the evader skill that lets Aloy dodge a few more times before stumbling, and the Valor Surge Master skill to help boost Valor buildup even more. We'll talk more about these other low health skills in a second, but if you're looking for weaves for them, check out my video on all the coil and weave locations linked below. The only problem with the Vanquisher outfit is that it doesn't have any stamina skills, and we want stamina to fuel weapon techniques. So to compensate, I recommend using the stamina regen weave found on the Nora Thunder Warrior. Regen is definitely the priority, but you can also add the weapon stamina plus weave from the Utah Gravesinger to increase the maximum stamina level. If you have elite weaves from the Burning Shores, then two of the elite weapon techniques weaves will also max out both stamina skills. If you don't have access to the Tanakh Vanquisher yet, then the Utaru Protector, Tanakh Marshal, and Tanakh Skirmisher can all serve as a good base for a low health build as well. Just make sure to add weaves to make up for the important low health skills and always prioritize low health ranged and defense. Those other low health skills on the Vanquisher are helpful as well. Low health melee will double your damage with melee attacks. But, unfortunately, it doesn't boost critical or silent strikes, damage from exploding resonators, or the new elemental capsules in the Burning Shores. If it did boost these things, that would make the melee playstyle more viable, so hopefully that can change in the future. Low health valor would be really good, but unfortunately it seems like there's a couple of bugs that handicap it. Unlike other low health skills that trigger at the critical health level, which again is 176, low health valor will only trigger at 175. This means it often isn't active, because if you're playing the low health build correctly, you'll be at 176 most of the time. Even worse, I've noticed that even when it is active, it only gives a 25% valor boost instead of the 50% it's supposed to. Hopefully Gorilla can fix low health valor in the future. Having the 50% extra valor generation active all the time would be really nice. The final low health skill, low health stamina, is only available in the Burning Shores DLC. This one will cause weapon stamina to regenerate faster when below 25% health. Combined with the regular stamina regen skill at level 2, stamina regenerates at 2.5 points per second. Combined with a level 4 stamina regen, it regenerates at a very quick 6.25 points per second. The Burning Shores also brought us a new Valor Surge that works well with the low health playstyle. Base game Valor Surges can certainly still work, but Defy Death is the new option. Instead of damaging ourselves to get into the critical health state, Defy Death gives us an elegant way to activate all the low health skills. Plus, it gives us some additional benefits. During its 1 minute duration, you'll get an additional 50% damage boost that stacks with low health ranged. They combine via multiplication, so together you get a 2.7x multiplier or 170% increase. But unlike low health range, that 50% boost applies to explosive, elemental, melee, and even trap damage. Defy Death also caps berry healing at the critical health level, so we don't necessarily have to wait for low health regen to heal. Low health valor won't be active though because we don't gain valor while a valor surge is active. Defy Death also gives us a guaranteed second chance, which means when we take a fatal blow, Instead of dying, the Valor Surge ends and we get healed up to the critical health level again, and we get a 5 second cleanse effect to remove any states that were applied, like crushed or burning, and the typical cleanse effect of 30% elemental damage reduction. So Defy Death is a great Valor Surge to use with the low health build. But if you don't have the Burning Shores DLC, then other top tier Valor Surges like Range Master, Power Shots, and Chain Burst all work well too. Just remember that those that heal you, like Range Master, can be a bit problematic in maintaining the critical health state. 
state. Interestingly, Overshield will maintain the critical health state even though it effectively gives us more HP. In fact, the Overshield health maximum acts as the new critical health level. So if you like the idea of even more protection, this is a great option for your Valor Surge. Now, there are a few other tips I want to make sure you have to use the low health playstyle effectively. First, it's important to know that damage over time effects applied to Aloy, like the crush state, corrosion from acid, or burning will prevent low health regen from working. This means that cleansing potions are really important. Instead of keeping lots of health potions in your toolkit, you'll want to prioritize cleansing potions. I'd recommend keeping at least three or four on you at all times. If you run out of cleansing potions, remember that the crush state only deals damage while sprinting, dodging, jumping, sliding, or doing melee attacks, so you can avoid taking damage by simply walking. If you have auto sprint on, you can crouch to make sure you don't sprint. Also, that red vignette that shows up when you're at low health actually doesn't correspond to any of the low health levels. It triggers at about 36% health, so just make sure you don't use that as your indicator for being in the critical health state. It's also worth noting that the various low health foods like fruit on fire and the salt bite special won't heal you when consumed, so you can remain in the low health state while gaining their benefits. I hope this video has helped you understand how to use the low health playstyle and given you the confidence to give it a try. When used correctly, it can be very powerful, and as we saw, much more resilient than you might think. I'll have links below for all the other videos I mentioned. And if you're interested in checking out my full build that's based on the low health playstyle, including all the weapons I use and how I coil them, you can check that out right here. Thanks to my friends Paris, Mr. Fancy Pants, Twinge, and other people over on Discord for contributing their knowledge and suggestions to this video. If you want to come hang out with us, the link to my server is always down in the description. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.